Hey, thanks for joining us. Today, we are gonna take those brown chairs that you see in the back, they're quite dated, and turn them into beautiful painted upholstered pieces. They look like a completely different chair. I actually lost some of the initial recording because I hadn't planned on them being so beautiful. Okay, so here we are. I have already spray painted them brown. I'm using Bungalow 47 uh, tarnished silver. And I did this with a, an HLP sprayer at home and then brought them in to do the rest of the painting. I am using a small a decorative brush and layered linen to paint the detail areas. I'm actually going quite slow. I've got this sped up um, right now. I've got it four times and I'll move to eight times here pretty quickly. And I'm just hitting up those detail areas. So I've got the top bound, the bottom binding, and then the center. And I'm just gonna outline the center for now, and then I'm gonna turn around and do the back, and then flip it around to go ahead and fill in with a larger brush. Right now, I'm just trying to hit the areas that are very tiny, and I'm not worried too much if, it's, if my lines aren't perfectly straight, or if they go over the edge, because I'm gonna do a wash of the layered linen over this as well, and I'm gonna be able to clean up any of that at the end. If I think it's too bad, I'll clean it up a bit with a light brush and a little paper towel, but for the most part, this is gonna be plain and simple. I'm just using a small brush to keep it pretty clean, but I'm not overly worried if I color outside the lines, so to speak. I think it took me probably about an hour per chair to do the detail work on this, um, front and back and that was it's really quite relaxing after doing i think i did six of these i have two more that i need to finish but i have six for a job that somebody actually purchased from me and um, all of the armless chairs somebody else purchased and i've got the two remaining that i will probably finish and sell at the store but it, I, they actually have lost the armchairs have lost their arms and so i need to do some repair work where they had been and get that all filled in, filled out, and then they'll probably just go for sale in the shop. I do love them. They're monstrous chairs. They're huge, they're heavy, and um, they were quite time consuming, but I could not believe how beautiful they came out. In the opening clip where you saw them stacked up in the back, I actually hadn't taken any before pictures, and I really wanted you to see how dark and dated that they were they were definitely all all dark 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 chairs you couldn't even see the detail and i actually do have the dining for, dining room table for this set which had been my initial plan was to redo the whole thing as a set but the dining room table has some pretty severe water stains and it just wasn't savable so it was great that somebody wanted the chairs without the table so now I've moved on from the detail area to starting the wash. The wash is one part water to one part paint. You can actually water it down a little bit more than that if you want to, but I don't recommend it necessarily because when you wipe back the paint and it's this wet, you're already going to do your wet distressing based on that point. So if you have too much water, you might pull off too much paint and that's a concern. The wetter that paint, that underneath paint gets, the more you're likely to wipe off. And I want them distressed, but I don't want them heavily distressed necessarily. You can kind of see how it's pulling back now as I clean up this area with the little bead work on top of the chair. Now, if you didn't want them distressed under this, what you would do is actually put a seal between the paint layer and the wash, and that would keep it from distressing underneath. But I this, this kind of saved me the step. I distress everything. I love everything distressed. So uh, I didn't have to do the wet distress and then come back and paint it. Um, I was able to do the wash and wet distress at the same time because I was a very using a very wet wash. And now I've moved on to the feet of the chair, which is definitely the worst part. Anybody who paints chairs know that the runs, the feet, those type of areas are the worst. And with all this detail, it's a lot of fun and it comes out incredibly beautiful, but it is a lot of work to make it all kind of seamless. The thing is when you're doing a wash is you wanna make sure where everything overlaps that you kind of get that area moist again and wipe that area back so that it 
doesn't look like it's doubly thick there. And again, if you want a lighter wash, the trick is to seal it between the base coat and the wash, and that will keep it a little bit lighter. Here, I really liked the wash soaking into the gray and lightening up the whole thing. If that's not what you're going for, just add that extra step of sealing it between coats and it'll give you a completely different look. It'll be a much softer look, but here I really wanted that, that whitewashed finish throughout the whole piece. And again, that distress flowed through the whole piece. If only I could paint this fast in real life, that would be really nice. Yeah, those little beads um, were kind of tricky. The trick is there to make sure you're doing really small sections so that you it doesn't dry too fast to wipe it back. If you run into that though, you can see I just sprayed my cloth and started wiping some of that back. And that's particularly good in the areas where you're overlapping. And now we're almost the home stretch. We're gonna add two to three layers of top coat. In this case, I'm using general finishes flat out flat because it is my favorite top coat, especially for things like chairs. It gives you the feeling of a waxed finish while it gives you the superiority finish of a top coat. It is hands down my favorite. And I'm gonna go right over the leather again. I've painted over all the leather except for the bottom seat where you actually sit down on it. Um, and it's gonna wear just fine. It's not gonna crack, it's not gonna do any of that. It's gonna be beautiful because there's not much give in this fabric. So in this leather, it's really solid, but you do wanna make sure that you protect it with a couple of coats of top coat. At least two, three is better. You could even do four and it'd be great. Um, again, I love the flat out flat. It's not yellowing. You're not gonna see it at all. It's just gonna give it a nice, um, very matte, but um, soft, silky feeling like you've waxed the whole chair and I don't have to wax it. And so here you see the finished product and I'm so excited with how it came out. The fabric looks fantastic with it and the buyer loves the chairs that she bought. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more DIY.